happened there, Ms. Bridger. All right. Kathleen will not be joining us. How's she doing? She's getting stronger every day. It's a process. Jim, you, you, you're our, our, our senior alternate. I am? Yeah. Ooh. Did you know that? You, you, I didn't. But right? you've become our senior alternate. Wow. That's impressive. <laughs> what that means is, is that if we have somebody who's not present, regular member, then you become a voting member. Okay. If you're here. Okay. I was hoping for that the whole day. The whole day. Dang it. Just being there, what is that, 95% of the yeah, showing up, right? I know. <laughs> well, we were glad you showed up at the Bartlett Jackson Ambulance. I think that was good to listen it to. It was fun. So you can hear what they have to say and how they operate. And yeah. Rick Murnick, when I asked him how long you've been doing it, since 1968, he really has. You know, wow. And he's in his mid-70s now, he's been at it a long time. Mm -hmm. It was just he and Sue Goddard, as I re remember back from my previous time it's like back in the 80s and yeah. 90s and those guys really ran the show and did a good job and brought us to where we are now you know yeah um, that was some young blood that young kid i rob impressive. he's pretty sharp isn't impressive. he impressive yeah do you, you think know. he's 20. why i don't know i don't know, I don't, know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know enough about him yet, i have socks older than he is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know <laughs> But you know what? <laughs> he's wise beyond his years. I mean, he's really a smart young man. He sure is. Uh, well and, spoken. Good. But the thing that struck me was not just not just the information he was giving, mm -hmm. but the attitude yeah. that he had in giving it. Mm -hmm. and it was he cared. There's no question about it. Okay. You, know, you could tell when he talked about going to the continuing education meetings and you know all of that. Young, smart, knows yeah. his stuff, and yeah. they trust him, yeah, yeah. which is good. All right, uh, just call this meeting to order. Okay. And uh, we can call the roll, please. David Cameron. Bill Terry. Frank DeFusho. Jim Wasco. Bennett, Richard A. Yeah. Sir Dyer, you going to join us or you can join us up at the table, you know, it would be okay. This would be a better view. All right, well, that too. All right, um, and Sarah Campbell. On Zoom. Hey, brother. Welcome. You're <laughs> not a three dimensional view today. <laughs> but you'll have a terrible perspective, or maybe a better perspective, who knows? <laughs> uh, all right, um, because Kathleen's not here, uh, you will be voting member of the CD. Yeah. Just in case we vote on anything, and since we do need, the first thing we need to vote on is looking at minutes from... Uh, um, I would like to make one mention. Um, uh, Deborah Hill is not here this evening. Um, she's indicated that she will re be resigning from uh, the board. Who will be resigning? Exactly. Um, <laughs> it's 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 nicer. nicer. We can keep people. Uh, Deborah. Yeah, well, Deborah imagine? Hill's a, a, an alternate who's attended two meetings since she was appointed back in November, or early that? December. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she came into our January meeting, our April meeting, and uh, according to our uh, bylaws, mm -hmm. I would have had to have sent a note to you yeah. uh, saying that she's not been attending meetings. Yeah. Um, and I checked in with her after hearing that she wasn't going to be here this evening and said, you know. Yeah, fish or pet bait. Yeah, uh, we really, I mean, She's a great lady, and I, uh, you know, 
time sometimes? Take, take perspective, but she has a daughter who's on the uh, basketball team at Kennett. Okay. And she'll be a junior this coming year. They won the, the whole nine yards last season yes. for, for the state of New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And she was on that team. Uh, she's a very tall lady. She's like the tallest lady on their team. She's the uh, so she is going to play a, a, a much greater role, and mom wants to be there at those games. And I said, uh, planning board or going to see your kid watch basketball, which is more important? And I said, definitely being at the planning board. Wow! No, I said, <laughs> you got your priorities right there. You should always come back. I told you. You know, yeah. she won't be playing basketball here forever, yeah. but you know, probably at the college level. Um, right. <laughs> at some point. Uh, anyway, so well, she, she will be sending you a note formally. But okay. All right. Just to I'll let you know. Really Thanks. All right. Um, first vote is to review approve minutes from the last meeting. Um, any any comments? Review revisions. I move that we accept it. I hear a motion to accept. Do I hear a second? Second. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any yeah. uh, opposed? I wasn't here. So. No. Well, you can still, you can still make some noise. <laughs> <laughs> At least for that meeting. I'll make noise, I'm sure, but not for that particular meeting. Okay. What about your meeting? All right. Uh, so minutes have been approved. All right. Public comment on uh, anything uh, that's uh, not before our board this evening. Uh, Jerry, since you, you can participate as a public member as well. You know. well I'm a member, aren't I? Yeah, well, you, you can also participate as a public member, so you could. Well, I have no comment. You could, you could wear two hats. <laughs> you don't have anything to say? Not yet. <laughs> As a, as, as a non-voting member, you have the right to participate as a public member, as well as. Am, am I a non-voting member? You're a non-voting member. Hmm? You're a non-voting member. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. And we have a seven Sarah member board. Why can't Sarah vote? No, I'm not saying she can vote. She so. can vote. Sarah, so on. So um, one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Who mm -hmm. Cherry would be the seven. Scott. We have to amend our earlier discussion. You're a voting member this evening. The Scott's because fine. Scott's not You're here. number seven. You're number seven. So you're in. You can come to the table, you know. Lucky I'm set. I'm coming to here. He looks comfortable. That's funny. Okay, That's and I withdraw my comment. You can participate as a member of the public because you're not entitled to that <laughs> as a <laughs> member of the public. So, you know, your, your opportunity is lost. I started out confused now. <laughs> but you've been elevated or relegated at the same time. <laughs> Oh, how do you do that? I don't know. It's great though. <laughs> this is a tough business. All right. Um, ooh, short term rental applications. We have a couple. Actually, we have several this evening. We have three of them. Two of them have. Well, walk us through. Issues, yes. Um, the first one on the list is Alex, Alec and Melissa. Um, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen this happen. The tax card says six bedrooms. The septic on file says three. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh, we, we've seen things like that before. Like that. <laughs> okay. So they got a problem there. So, so they're advertising. Is that, they're basically saying that we have a six bedroom, but their septic doesn't match by three. Right. Well, we know that that all right, so our, um, the, the way we need to work that is, is that we, we can accept the application. Because everything else is fine. Because it, they've identified everything correctly. Yes. But we have to uh, notice to the, uh, the board selectman that there is a, um, an irregularity. No, no, she'll send it officially to the yeah. office. Because we'll be send with the comments. And, sure. and so you're I'm aware. Maybe they're just not aware, you know, I don't, I don't know. 
just where is that located? This is located at 146 Tin Mine Road. I'm not exactly sure which house it is. I know the one above me, but then I'm not sure because I'm on 114. But I'm just thinking that on the side of the line, yeah, but I, a faulty septic right. system. I know. Are, are you? I, oh, you got a picture of it? Nothing but trouble. Is there, a um, picture, is there a picture of the house? Yeah. Yeah, there is. It looks well to me. Oh, yeah, it's that one up on it. <laughs> oh, that one. There's <laughs> a big one here. How could, how could that have Summer's old house? Like, happen? No. Yeah. No, Summer's old house is on I mean, my That's an amazing description. Yeah. In, uh, right, I mean, that's not like one right. off. Yeah, I know. That one fourteen. so this is on the. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's the old. Uh, was that the Colonel's house? Or no, no, no. That's on, that? the, that's on the left hand side yeah. going up. Mm -hmm. And that's like the Stone the Fox. Game. Stone Fox? Yeah. With the murder and all that? Yeah. You know, yeah. Six Whoa. bedrooms. That's what that looks like. Four and a half baths. And they're probably over six bedrooms. But the campus is getting interesting. Wow. It's a big house. But it's, yeah, a, it's, it's a good thing that it's the Board of Selectmen that approve or disapprove. We only. <laughs> we only Review applications. Well, and, and well, we'll get to another one here. We'll see, but I mean, we, you know, I mean, there's a mismatch there that just you just can't get around that. Okay, so you're going to have to turn three of those bedrooms into dens or something, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> offices, <laughs> offices, <laughs> our offices, TV rooms, <laughs> but also meeting <laughs> rooms. You can't advertise it. As That's right. right. Yeah. Well, we run into that. Well, right. you'll be hearing that for the next one. Interesting. Is that, is that, are we able to regulate that? There, isn't that First Amendment rights? About septic <laughs> and how they advertise? Oh, how, right. Well, I mean, you can't advertise something that is illegal in the town of Jackson, right. I would think. So, I don't right. think the First Amendment would. But I suppose a slick lawyer could probably yeah, actually, work something out. Um, but I don't think the, so. the question you yeah. asked is can we or can't we? And the answer is, is that no one has done uh, a, 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 an effort to bring us to court to challenge yeah, that's, that's the issue, yeah. Uh, however, it is in our ordinance, and therefore it is, it, we can, as long as... Or they can. Yeah, as right. long as it's in the ordinance. The select they can, select back, can, can they no. have that well, to back them up? Yeah. Yeah. And, and there is well. a and there is a basis. There is also a basis with the, uh, uh, actually with the federal government. The federal government assumes that you can only have two members uh, uh, sleeping in a bedroom, mm -hmm. um, and, and that's not. And um, obviously, that it, it's not strict, but it's part of their assumption that a housing unit has two people to a bedroom, um, and that's what we work with, with some flexibility, obviously, because we say. Two times the number of bedrooms plus two to allow some flexibility. We do have properties in town that have six or eight people sitting in a bedroom. I'm sure. For many, many years. So if those days were over. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> it's, it's, it's an we, we, we do not wish to ask about what people do inside their, their homes. Oh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure they separated by a sex. So, so all we're doing is back yet, so we have to accept. We have, well, um, accept the application and send it back to us and say, I'm going to fix this and we do something about it. I, I, do I have a, now that we've had a discussion, um, do I have here a motion to accept the application with comments? I would make that motion for, I can get the words out. I'll yeah. second it. All right. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. We're good. One okay. down, Next two to go. Is... I have Maui, but it's Maloney. Uh, Malloy. Malloy. This is another one that's. Um, this has a, this one is an advertising issue. They have a three bedroom septic and hex car. They're advertising four, I don't know how they advertise, four slash five bedrooms. They've changed that one. They have changed Yes, they have, and they've they put it back to where three, so it matches what they have with the septic system. And that we find out the last time, so we can approve that, because they, they're abiding by what they're supposed to. Because everything else is in, in yes. everything else is in technical, mm -hmm. correct. 
wasn't an issue with them. And you know these folks? I don't know who they are, but their application and all, we've had discussions about it, okay? And we've been working with them. First of all, they didn't give us that conditional application thing. They didn't, so we finally forced them to get it here. And then, okay, that was all fine. And then we found out that they were still advertising more bedrooms than they had septic. So we called them, Julie did, Hoyt, and talked to them and this and that, and they sent an email that said, okay, we will say now it is what it is, matching the septic. That's all we can do. Right. Some of these people may just be innocent, you know, like they don't know what, you know, six bedrooms, septic system, three. Right. Well, many and people, boy, so if say. they come from a city with, you know, septic in a town or a city, yeah, sewer I don't system. even know what yeah, sewer system septic is. Septic is, what, is, what is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the toilet, and it just goes away. Well, after I'm six years, you notice. <laughs> I'm, I'm, going through, I'm going through that right now. We're having to redo our notes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've been more learning about septic than I ever cared to know. Yeah. Uh-oh. 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 It's a stinky subject. Okay, so this one is also a unique one. I don't think we've ever seen we, one. We, we, we have, oh, I'm sorry. I thought we did. We, we need to uh, have a motion to, to accept. Mm -hmm. Is this with okay. comment again? No, this would be no comments because he no. said the change. It's, it's all been resolved. It's 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 it has right. been resolved. Yeah. Yeah. I'll make a motion to accept it. Okay. Your motion to a second? I'll make a motion to a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, note that the sitting person also <laughs> said aye. aye. With a, I, I don't know if that was a, either that or first. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sarah, 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 it's approved, the septic is approved for one bedroom. They're advertising one bedroom. The people live on the property, so it's so the people. Live. Sorry, they, they're they're renting out their barn. They live in the house. Yeah, they're renting. So yeah. yeah that's it. And your point is? I think it's just unique. That's the first time we've ever had somebody yeah. actually lived on the property. An actual res resident. Yes. Yeah, it's interesting because this is this is actually an ADU. Right. An accessory dwelling unit, mm -hmm. um, and so it's accessory to the primary home, um, and they're using it as a short-term rental. And there's nothing. In fact, as these, uh, I, I made sure I took took a look to see what the RSAs were for ADUs, um, and there is no prohibition against using the rental as a, as a rental. Mm. Isn't there something about a thousand square feet? The building can be no more than a thousand square feet. Yeah, I mean, there's rules for ADU yeah. and there's rules for short term right. rentals, right. And, but neither that nor the training shall be. Mm -hmm. um. that, that might be something on down the line that we would want to look at raising the square footage or you know, accessory going in. I don't know. After reading some discussion here, I think it was Scott Badger talking about how ADUs may be a, a, a way of getting more people to be able to afford right. to not only hold the place, but whole, to rent and it helps with the mortgage whole, and all this, so maybe we'd be getting smaller instead of bigger. I don't know. That was the whole idea of our doing accessory for the yeah. right. additional. So that's why basic, I see Basically with a thousand square feet, it's tough to get two bedrooms. Right? Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure if making it bigger makes it easier to do what we want to do, which is to you know allow people to get into Maybe defray the cost of their mortgage and giving some housing for people that we need in town. So, maybe just point of discussion. You said that. It's, it's an interesting conversation. Okay. But yeah, I, I don't disagree with you a thousand. I, mean, I, I look at what um, Habitat for Humanity builds. They build between 1,200 and 1,400 yeah. square feet. A thousand square feet basically gets you down to 
a one bedroom unit that's reasonable for someone to uh, build and, and, and then you look at the pricing to create yeah. a thousand square foot <clears throat> unit and you're looking at you know the two hundred forty thousand dollars and oh that's not working <laughs> amazing you look at the land and all the infrastructure it just and, and you know, always have the septic system issues too you know, if, if you have to increase the size of the septic system I mean, it, it, it's it's not a slam dunk in terms of cost There's no So everything else is fine. Yeah. Was just, I was just pointed out that this was a unique situation. It's it is, and it's owner occupied, which yes. is kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Make a motion to accept it. We're rare for I have account. a motion to accept. Do I have a second? I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, thank Aye. you. Thank you. Thank you. No opposed, okay, great. Um, all right. Capital Improvement Program. Update discussion. Okay, first question I would have is, um, has anybody wanted to report something that hasn't been able to report yet? Have we gotten all our initial reports? Are they going to be in writing or in Oh, right now we're, we're verbal. Okay. The highway department, um, the capital improvement, what they're considering is putting a roof on the sand pile that will save hours of labor, probably pay for itself in two or three years. I think Frank will speak to the costs, but um, beyond that, they don't have any desires or anything they want to talk about other than that. And for the school, speaking for Kathleen, um, the, um, the school board basically has no comment whatsoever with respect to capital improvements other than they're currently um, designing a playground and it's funded halfway at $75,000 and put in for another $75,000 next year. Um, but beyond that, they have no plans. The, um, they're welcoming in a new principal, um, so that's sort of on their agenda. Um, and they are in the process of, they had committees, um, and now they're dissolved, to um, look at other options besides Kennett um, for sending the students who graduate from Harvard. Um, and um, the um, the committee that was assigned to the task sort of came up with um, some data points that made no contact with any of the facilities that they looked at. So it's sort of, um, as they described it, in the But it has to be decided on, I think, within a year and a half. So that's all the school has. Yeah, uh, question for you, though. Um, they they do have a strategic plan that they have developed, and I believe their strategic plan has within it uh, some funding uh, processes that they, they were considering. I, I understand that they're backing away right at the moment in terms of... You're speaking about the, the uh, facility structure itself? In other words, the need for more space? Yeah. Well, I think that... Um, the way it was explained to, to Kathleen and I by two of the board members was that um, they have no plans to offer a plan for increasing the size of the building. They have, right now, their um, real need, as Frank can tell you with the office here, is, is storage space. They're li severely limited in the storage space but they're not prepared or anywhere near prepared to talk about any kind of um, structural issue. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, 
I well, guess because we could we could talk about it, but unless it comes from them, it's sort of yeah. I, I hear you. It, 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 there's two parts of that, and it's the same issue I think for here us here in Jackson as it is in every town in New Hampshire. The fact that the, the school system is separate from the town in terms of its uh, how it's funded and how we vote on it in terms of the, the tax base and the, that sort of thing. And, um, and as a planning board, we really serve the board of selectmen, not the, we don't serve the school board. Um, it, it, and that's, that was what you had assigned Kathleen, you know, to look at the school that she did. On, on the other hand, the planning board does have a responsibility uh, for a master plan. And the master plan is intended to take a look at the entire community, not whether or not you're in a school or uh, whatever. We're, we're looking at the entire town and the entire town development and what's necessary. Um, my, so, guess, my guess is that the school board would look favorably upon anything that the, the PB would put in a master plan that would provide for the continue down the strength of the school. Yeah, so I, I guess my, my point being is is that even if they don't choose to participate, we still have a need to have consideration uh, for their needs. If it's in the works in the next 10 years, shouldn't we consider it? That, if they have no proposal, that's fine. Yeah. But we should still oh, we should sit, it. We still need to keep it in mind, and we still need to think about what that is and it how it could be coming up. And somehow. and some and a little bit. We have a little cart before the horse process here, because we're going to be the master plan we're working from is 2016. We'll be doing that effort again in 25, um, and so that will. We're looking at funding for things for the next 10 years, but we don't have a master plan that really accounts for the next 10 years. So we have to do some anticipation, I guess is my point. Uh, we, we, we need to anticipate some of the things that we're going to be looking at in the master plan. Um, and yeah, okay, it's a little bit catch-22. You can't really say it's part of the master plan because we haven't done it yet. But um, if we're looking at for a 10-year window, well, we, we need to take into consideration what we think might, what the things might be needed. And from where I sit, I, I know they're going to have some needs between now <laughs> and 10 years from now. As, as is the police department. Everybody is. Yeah, so I think we have to, we, we have to, pull that in somewhere. We may not be able to do as good a job as we might if they were engaged with us, but we'll still have to do something. And I think the master plan is an excellent spot for that kind of stuff. Can I just say, well, I think it's tougher mm -hmm. as far as figuring out what you're going to do for the future of the school because we don't know how many students we're going to have. Yeah. We've got to really, you know, I, and I don't know, well, I, I don't can, know what the projections I can, are. I, can, if you I know. can tell you that I <clears> all the past plans are here back to the 40s mm -hmm. and the school has varied mm -hmm. really very little mm -hmm. in all that time. Is that the way it looks now? Because I haven't Yeah, I mean right now it's a little higher than normal mm -hmm. than what I mean 34 students kind of right. is about an average. Mm -hmm. There's more than that now. Yeah. Um, who knows how many young families and I mean I know there's just uh, families with young children Age well, particularly if, uh, if, if we don't do anything with affordable housing, um, we're going to shrink the number of families that can actually afford to live here. And so we'll likely shrink the number of uh, uh, that, That's a tough time. Yeah. The entire east and west coast are facing that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I guess we still probably need to anticipate that there will be some kids uh, and so over the last 50, 60 years, it right. hasn't varied. Somewhere between kids. 6 and 11 kids maybe each year coming into the 
maybe four one, maybe eight another. Are we taking people just, tuition? I'm sorry. As, as an aside, I met a woman four days ago who graduated from Jackson. And the graduating class at that time was four students. Yeah. And I don't know if anybody remembers who Burbank. Yeah. She was a teacher there then. Well, well I think it's good for our community to have school. I, I hope that we can keep it going yeah. and get students in here and again where people are going to live. We have some work to do. We have, we have right. some work to do. So I suppose though, and I, I asked her, because I don't know really much about what's going on in the school. Are they tuitioning any students? Say again? Are we getting tuition students um, from other places? One. And the gym. And um, is that like I know, I know that the um, the school board has the right to accept from its employees um, and can yeah. make a ruling as to how much the tuition would be for okay. its employees. I know that there's been town employees in the past and they wish to send their kids to Bartlett, but that would, that's a selectment issue. To Jackson. Hmm? To Jackson. Yes. Yeah. Right. Well, that, that's an issue for the selectmen to deal with, not the school board. In terms of if you have someone who's working for the town, right? And if they want to send, yeah, they work, live in Bartlett, for example, right. and they want to send their kids to Jackson, correct? Um, we don't set the tuition, but you're telling me that the selectmen have the ability to say the, the, we can the, accept the, it. The but school, the school board has the authority to. Set whatever or no tuition, tuition for its employees. Right. It cannot do that for the town employees because they are under the purview of the selectmen, not the school board. And but the selectmen have the right to say, you know, we'll whatever the tuition is. Let's say that the school board would say, you know, it's going to be five thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. for a town employee. The selectmen are, could then say we'll fund that as a as an employee benefit. Oh. Okay. I didn't, I didn't know about that right now, but I'm not but that's, I'm sure yeah, I'd like to look the, into the, that. The, the, the selectmen's employees are the duty of the selectmen, not the school board. I think the other time has come up is when a teacher wanted her child to be in Jackson School for and didn't live in town. Mm -hmm. And I think that's uh, acceptable. Exactly yeah, me too. And if you have a town employee, the same thing. As long as they can meet the, the tuition that is set from the school, I don't think the selectmen should be determining no, the, what the, no, the tuition the, is. No, what I'm saying is that, for example, if in the example that Dick was just saying, saying the school board could say, as a benefit to our That's employees, right. we'll mm -hmm. allow your child to come to our school, even though you live in Bartlett or Conway or wherever, for a charge. Mm -hmm. That's up to the school board. The selectmen could do the same thing with their employees if they said, you know, you, as a benefit of working for the town of Jackson, you can send your child, if you live in Conway or Freiburg or wherever, to Jackson School. But again, that the way I would approach that would be for the selectmen to talk to the school. Yeah. But I know that has you know come up. Sure. I know that has come up. But if that's possible, I think mm -hmm. that's that's okay. But I will definitely uh, make sure that we talk about it. And who knows, it's tougher and tougher to find employees. That might be a benefit to somebody you find out. Right. Right. All right. So um, I can give us a little update on the ambulance issues. Uh, I'm having completely talked with uh, Peter Benson yet, and somebody directly from the ambulance company. But I can say that there are some changes that likely will be afoot because of the changes in emergency care. Right now, there's one ambulance serving Bartlett and Jackson. And the question is going to come up, will we need a separate ambulance for Jackson and a separate ambulance? We do have two you know, for Bartlett. Oh, really? Yeah, we do have two. Oh, I didn't realize that. But anyway, there needs to be um, recognition of the quality of the service and the, the frequency of the service needs to be looked at. So far this year, there were 371 calls, um, which is 120 more 
than last year. And they're responding according to the dispatcher. Um, and they get called for, for fires and for motor vehicle accidents, as well as for health-related calls. They do not get called for now for river rescue uh, issues, and that may be coming up. Particularly since I'm looking at the Conway Sun, there's a river rescue that goes on virtually every day, if not two or three times you know, a day. So they're anticipating that the call volume may get up as high as 1,000 a year, as opposed to this year, the anticipation is 750. Uh -huh. Another issue of, of concern is that when you look at the cardiopulmonary resuscitations that are going on, the success rate uh, for the combined ambulance service is 10% of survival. Um, and it's, that's a tough thing to judge, but there are some communities, one they reported, that had a community success rate of 60%. Now that would be hard even in a hospital setting, but at least we know that you know, they really, it's on their mind that that needs to be improved. But some changes are likely to have to occur uh, with getting access to automatic external defibrillation for AEDs. In the ideal situation in a town like this, there should be automatic defibrillators in every population source. Um, just because you can get electronic defibrillation much quicker than waiting for an ambulance to arrive and just doing manual CPR. Um, and so... And we don't have that. We don't have any requirements, so they're not in we, we don't have a requirement for it, from what I understand. Um, I, now, I haven't completely finished talking to everybody. I'm sort of in the middle of this, and I'll put out a, a report when, when it finally comes to be. But, but there's talk of having a community, uh, a community involvement uh, sort of ish, uh, initiative mm -hmm. coming up to get the people involved in the town uh, in this whole issue because it's very important. Mm -hmm. And going forward, there also is likely to be uh, a change in what the ambulances do in the next few years. They call it here mobile integrated health. Yes. And what this means is that instead of somebody going to the emergency department, the ambulance may actually go to their house and check them to see whether this is something that needs to go to the hospital or not. And they could do intermediary things such as draw blood, which they're already allowed to do. Uh, to do uh, vital signs, to provide you know, basic information for the hospital system. And what's going on in hospital medicine today is virtual care, mm -hmm. and that may be happening vis-a-vis -vis the mobile care as well. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens going forward. And, and know, there's a couple of towns in New Hampshire that are actually, I mean, I think Manchester, <coughs> yes. Nashua. Yes. Is there a particular in this point? There's one in the school and in the Wendy's. I don't think there is one here. I don't yeah. know. But Jim, do people know what your background is? In, uh, you, you might just for the for the camera and for the rest yeah. of us. I mean, this, this fellow knows what he's talking about. We do know that. We <laughs> all know. Some of us. Some of us. Some of us. Okay. I was an emergency department physician in the Boston area for 45 years. I was the first director of emergency services for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts based in the Department of Public Health uh, in Boston. Uh, from that, I went to be a practicing emergency physician after a residency in surgery at the Brigham. And on the North Shore of Boston, we started the first paramedic program in the Commonwealth. And I was the regional medical director for emergency services for essentially 30 years. Um, has been a paramedic instructor. And at Leahy, I was uh, essentially board chairman, vice chair of the, of the service uh, at Lincoln. So ambulance care has been my bag for 40 something years. Um, and in a big community with <coughs> lots of people. So, you know, I, I'm very, I was very pleased to hear the discussion that went on. Uh, and I complimented them for it because you could read the community concern, the individual concern, just in their tone of voice. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's hard to get because there's so much going on in emergency medicine today that it becomes oh, almost routine, you know. And there's nothing routine about sick people. Uh, 
And I think we're lucky to have commitments that we do, you know, of the people who are working here. Apparently four new EMTs starting in the service in the next week or so. So I look forward to continuing to attend their meetings oh, and, and be involved. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Jim, you did you said something about the food. you watched the whole proceedings and you were amazed at the humanity. Yeah. Yes. And well, I thought that really struck yeah, me. Yeah, the humanism is, is what I, I talked about. And it was obviously there because they didn't just talk about the machine. Right. Uh, they didn't just talk about it wasn't just the location. Stuff. Yeah, it wasn't just stuff. It was a recognition that this is people problem that we have to take care of. And, you know, I think here in Jackson, they're wedded to the fire department and where the fire department is. But I think, you know, if and when changes occur to the fire department location, building, whatever, there's going to have to be some needs put forward for the ambulance too. As our service grows and more people are taken care of, it's probably going to need to be facilities for them to have meetings, to have educational efforts outside of Bartlett. Most of that occurs in Bartlett right now. Storage of equipment, storage of medications, all of that. Peter Benson talked to me about a plan that's going forward to be proposed in March of perhaps moving the fire department to the parking lot that's right. over here right next to the uh, library. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you know, I don't know how far along the works are there, but that obviously is going to need some discussion and, and interest in the people, uh, people in the town paying attention to it. I'm wondering if there isn't a better place somewhere in Route 16, mm -hmm. you know, where there's much easier access to big highway. Um, you know, the big deal in emergency medicine is time of response. Yep. You know, well, that's what I was going to ask you. When they said they have 10% success, you know, you know, do they do they have any sense that that is because of the time? I mean, they're in Bartlett and they have to come well, it's, it's, it's hard to, to put a metric on what it is, but you know that if, if the time is less than 10 minutes from the time of call to arrival at the scene, you know, time is yeah. time and is and muscle. And, when and, it comes and the to initial the response normally is somebody knows CPR, and CPR is, is I mean, we, we all went through that. I, I don't know if yeah. any, all of you are certified, but yeah. I mean, you had to become certified if you if you had any kind of relationship sure, with, sure. with coaching or anything. Yeah. I, I got certified, and it's like, you know, the idea was that it was going to be like 60% effective, and it's like, it, what, it's rated something like 10 to 12% effective, if that, if that yeah. compared to like the defibrillators being... Well, that's, you know, you, we, you need to get electronic intervention yeah. it, it, to the site of a cardiac emergency because you can pound on the chest all you want. And, and you break <laughs> But, um, and the whole deal of doing, doing respiratory management too, you know, that's sort of gone out the window these yeah, days. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Just because of communicable, communicable diseases and all that. And, uh, you know, there's, there's just a lot happening in emergency medicine. And down at this level, we're very fortunate that we have people who are committed. Is that, you know, the gentleman who's been involved for how many years now? And that's who you want to speak to. I wanted to say, you, you mentioned Peter Benson, it's fine, but Rick Murnick and Sue Godet, they're the oh. ones that have been there from the beginning. Yeah. And they're, they're the folks that really, with the fellow Rob, yeah. those are the three main people. Yeah. So you have your conversations with them, and please do come to all our meetings. Yeah. Because yeah, I will, important. I will for sure. But, but, I, but I think it's perfectly, perfectly appropriate for the planning board to be involved you know, in hearing what the issues are, because they're going to be changing, right. uh, and expectations will change. So, yeah. well, that was one of the that was one of the things that had been discussed previously. That if we build a new fire station, which we talked about earlier today, it was semi somewhat approved mm -hmm. to move forward to the new site, that we could potentially modernize the existing site. Yep. If we had to house an ambulance, yeah, we could do it. Yeah. So we have How is the personnel issue um, being met in the current ambulance? Do they have sufficient personnel? Yeah, they do. Yeah. yeah. So far, so good. And keeping it, keeping them certified. You know, one of the issues you have with small call volume 
you know, is making sure that people can do the procedures that you're expected to do when you don't do them frequently. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when you look at a North Shore or a Boston area ambulance, they do CPR every day. You know, they put in artificial airways every day. They start intravenous lines 10 times, 12 times a day. Um, and, you know, when you look at a shift, you know, they may have 10, 12, 15 calls per shift. Shift being, you know, eight hours long or so. And here we're dealing with, you know, 370 calls per six months for two towns. Yeah. You know, how many is that a day? It's like <laughs> two a day or three a day. And not all of them require high energy in, in, input. You know, so I think as a planning board, we have to oversee this. So somebody has to oversee it too. Uh, and maybe the director of, I don't know who oversees the ambulance, whether it's the emergency director. Rick, well, well, you mentioned that the people I mentioned, I mean, basically, they're practically autonomous, okay? Mm -hmm. So they come for some budgetary things and let us know what they're yeah, doing yeah. and what they need, but Rick Marinick, as I mentioned, yeah. Sue Gaudet, those are the and folks. Are, are, but they really shouldn't from. be autonomous. Well, yeah. in a sense, they are, because yeah, they do what you. they do, and they I come to see us once every couple of months yeah, and give they, us an update. But they, but they come to see you about the principal things they come to see you about are, um, are funding, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, and uh, and some of that has to do with obviously people, and yeah. and that's your bailiwick as select board. Where we come in is talking about what parts of those are capital needs. Right. What yeah. what would we need for facilities? What yeah. what what's necessary? I guess my question would be, um, if you are looking at a longer term perspective, which we're trying to do, mm -hmm. 10 years, um, do we need additional ambulance facility? It, it, it can, can they actually support having, uh, I don't know, whether they have one site, two sites? I, I have no idea that they, what their locations are. Um, but is there a need to get, or would it be possible to have a location that's closer to Jackson Mm -hmm. um, that would be shared, mm -hmm. um, that sh we should be talking about as part of our capital improvement program mm -hmm. and saying, yeah, we should be thinking about funding uh, a facility or mm -hmm. sharing in the funding a facility that's going to house an ambulance. Mm -hmm. To your point, whatever the requirement is that yeah, that's sure. necessary. Um, and the flip part of that, I think you also mentioned, is is that not everything's going to be dependent on an ambulance necessarily right. delivering that emergency service. Yeah. What additional facilities should we be considering as a town yeah. uh, to fund? Uh, I.e., do we say if you're a hotel, you have to have a defibrillator? And by the way, here's your, you know, whatever cost it is to have one in your yeah. building. Um, I mean, in many towns, every every police car has an automatic external reserve. Our police do as well, don't they, Frank? Yeah. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Our police are also, do you know, Dick? All police are EMTs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're all EMTs. Yeah. Okay. But what the chief told me, they, they, even though they're all the police officers are EMTs, um, that the only people they can transport in a police vehicle is a gunshot wound. Right. <laughs> so my son said, I'm having a heart attack, make sure I'm going to be shooting. But that's common, that's just not here, that's common police can't transport. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, this is, yeah. this is a problem, you know, statewide and, and nationwide. Well, it is, but we have, we also, but if you're sitting in, in downtown Concord or Manchester, you, you're covered. Here, yes. you know. Here you may not be. You may not be. Yeah, you're right, you may not be. Tin Mine Road or. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I, you know, I mean, we've been in and out of this town for almost 40 years, but full time since 2015. And I've not seen any community programs that sort of bring the public up to date 
about what the emergency care availability is and what the potentials could be going forward. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I mentioned yesterday that Jackson is an old population town. You know, the whole state of New Hampshire is like second or third oldest in the country, Maine and Vermont are in there too. But Jackson is right up there at the top of we, that. We have the oldest population and the oldest county and the second oldest state in the United yeah. States. Yeah. And what, so. What, what, what is the communication between an ambulance and the hospital? Well, okay. it's electronic. Uh, so if you take vitals yeah. on the site, does right. that get to the hospital before the ambulance? I, I have not seen the, the electronic communication that occurs here, but in most cases, yes. Um, but to avoid the delays in the communication, a lot of EMTs and paramedics work on points of care plans where the, the physicians have agreed, if you see this, do this, if you see this, do this. And so they follow that plan. But en route to the hospital, there will be a report given mm -hmm. so that the hospital will know what to expect. And when the ambulance arrives, they will have facility in the hospital available and ready to just take over the care. So if it's going to be a cardiac arrest, you want to make sure that the, the big room in the hospital that deals with that is all set, ready to go, and not have someone else in it who doesn't need it. That's a challenge. So, so from in seconds, seconds matter, yeah. minutes matter, you know. And so from a, our perspective, trying to bring it back to our, our reality, job. Reality, yeah. And I appreciate all of what you're saying, but to get back to our job, yeah, um, we need to be looking at what is the funding yeah. that will be required yeah. to realize some of the potential. Yeah that's out there for some of the changes yeah. that might occur. And part of that might be facilities that are um, brick mortar. And some of it might be mobile. Yeah, um, exactly. And some of it may be... And some of it may be off-site. I was going to say, dis distributed. Local. Yeah, distributed. Yeah. Where, where it's not either. It's not right. actually the ambulance organization that's actually the deliverer of mm -hmm. the process yeah. that we as a town need to consider and consider funding or enabling. Yeah. Even if we had um, a proper facility and an ambulance in it, the likelihood of the personnel to manage well, that's would what, not be in Jackson. Well, it, that, that, that's, that's part of my, com com my, my consideration is like, do, do we, you know, do, do if we still have a need, but we can't locate something in our own town, it doesn't mean we just say, right. we're, we're, we throw our hands right. up and say we can't do anything about it. But it does suggest that we need to participate in a broader yep. effort to accomplish the objective. Uh, and that requires that we are also involved from a capital perspective in terms of what dollars we allocate to that activity. Yep, yep. Um, so that falls right into our purview. Right. Uh, and that's where I'm coming from. I, yeah. I, I, I'm not sure I, I'm thinking about whether or not we build a building or not. I'm, I'm not thinking about buildings. I'm thinking is about there, Is there such a thing as a private ambulance service? Oh, yeah. Those are kind uh, of apropos here in our area, yeah. the the institution called Action Ambulance right. has just signed a contract with the city of North of Conway yeah. to be a private ambulance provider for the city. Mm -hmm. And for Conway. Yeah. They came to New Hampshire uh, first operating in Ossipee. I'm very familiar with Action Ambulance because they were involved in the North Shore of Boston where I worked and you know I know the owners of Action Ambulance and I know John Hatch was the regional manager for New Hampshire. Their families had a home on Ossipee Lake for a long time. And that's what brought them up here. But they've had four years of service to the town of Ossipee and the surrounding communities. Mm -hmm. And they've been delivering patients to Memorial Hospital for four years. Mm -hmm. But in this last month and a half or so, 
they just signed a contract with Conway to be a preferred provider for the town of Conway. The Manchester, uh, Manchester Manchester Park was Park. transported from Memorial to Southern Maine and Newburgh. Mm -hmm. That area, Action. That, that, that was one of the ones, it ended up being the part of Jackson one that took her to Newburgh, uh -huh. but that was the other one that was discussed. Right. But that, I think, was in Ossipi. Yeah, right. So I think signing a contract in Conway probably means there are going to be facilities and garage in this area. And you know, and normally an ambulance garage will have place for people to sleep when they're right there on duty. So when they get calls, they can just jump in the ambulance and go, you know, to save the time. Because Manchester privatized their ambulance. Manchester, uh, Man Manchester is a private ambulance. Yes. They don't, yeah. The fire department doesn't have it. Yeah, so. well, it's becoming more and more popular mm -hmm. because it requires billing services. It requires, mm -hmm. you know, uh, updating of ambulances, it requires Training. looking at state and national regulations, and there's a lot to go on, and if you're doing it part-time, you may not be as efficient with it as if you do it full-time. Well, that's why hospitals contracted out emergency medicine. Yep. And can one of the ambulance services do intervenes? If they have a, yes, there is, there are, there's basic level EMTs, yep. which just do um, vital signs, yep. splinting, yep. things like that. But then there's an EMTI, which will give you intravenous. Yep. So they're allowed to start intravenous lines in fluid. And then there's EMT medication so that they can prescribe certain medications that you yourself might prescribe at home. Yep. Like if you have an anaphylactic or a bad allergic reaction, they can give adrenaline shot. Mm -hmm. But of course, the cream of the crop is the paramedic. Uh, the paramedic is trained to do essentially an extension of what goes on in the ER, uh, and more and more that's you know becoming popular. But paramedics need business experience. Yeah, they do. Yeah, and the more experience they get, the better they are. Like everything, if you're a carpenter and you don't <laughs> do that's any you're not finish do carpentry hard. for ten years, you're not going to be as good as somebody. But that's why it's hard to attract a paramedic. Yeah. 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 You're not, and you're not going to get the, yeah, I mean, it's just like, yeah. right. yeah. the it, thing it, about it, a company you like, you need hours. The yeah. thing about a company like Action that works in Boston and works, you know, in the North Shore and the West part is that they can rotate staff from there to here uh, for a week at a time, two weeks at a time, a month at a time. So they're bringing a, an experienced quality individual you know, to staff the end. It's tough when your volume is two to three a day. But it, it's likely to go up. I think it can only go up. It's already gone up 120 this year over last year. Um, Good night, the couple. Are both ambulances, both ambulances are housed in, in the apartment? Like two miles away. Yeah, two and a half miles away. In the apartment, like that. Both of them. Right. Now, where are they housed? In At the Glen Fire Station. Down okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, kind of near where Grant Supermarket is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Near there. Yeah. Because it's in the fire. That's in the fire station. Right. Yeah. And for the longest time, we only had one. Um, but you know, there was an effort a long time ago, probably 30 years ago. Someone came. And, uh, do you remember Kevin O'Connell? Yeah. And another fellow since passed away who wanted to privatize. Yeah. Wanted to take it over. Right. And we. It was a, just a, a resounding no from the public and the selectmen yeah. and everybody else. Sure. And I like the public system that we have right now. Yeah. And it doesn't cost us a lot of money because what right. you're talking about is going to be a lot more expensive. Of course. And they're taking them in, in the training that these fellows go through. Yeah. And they come to us every year. Two boards. Remember, we have to deal with Bartlett yeah. and Jackson. You have you yeah. know, two boards of selectmen. And they tell us, and Dick knows this, they tell us what they need. We start saving right now. We're saving, we, we're saving money for the we're next ambulance. Yeah, right. You know that'll be up, coming up in next year or the year and they after. Don't, and so they don't get cheaper year to year. They right. get more expensive. No, that's right. But you know, I I guess I've been around doing this long enough that I remember that the debate was about look, just get into the hospital. Yes. We don't want to have anybody else doing. Anything. Let's just get them to the hospital as fast as we can. Yeah. You know, and then it started about defibrillators. Yeah. And all well, the different things we used to refer to doing that. You know. We used to refer to that as you call, we haul, that's all. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
So we migrated. We have we have we have evolved. We have evolved a long way. You know? That's what it wasn't. Yeah. The end of your movie, right? That's, that, that's when it was just a business. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's when yeah. the ambulance companies, the ambulances started yeah. at funeral homes. I was just going to say that the, the units look very similar. Yes, yeah. and you know, I don't know about that. It was a red instead of a black. That's right. That's what they said. I honestly don't know what the breakdown is. Right. About that. That's where yeah. they started, was the funeral. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I don't know what the breakdown is, is where all the calls come from, but it used to be, because I never really talked about this in a long time, was the ski areas. Yeah. Broken legs, anxious sure. this and that, going up there and go yeah. up there and get their insurance card and get them to the, you know. Yeah. But in, in real ways. Yeah. Isn't it possible for us to do something know. different? I mean, I appreciate that we're in a <clears throat> we're in an unusual circumstance because we still have need, but we don't have value. So yeah. it, it becomes um, not economical for a, yeah. a full-time <laughs> business. But. It, Look at the number of seniors from Jackson who moved to Exeter. Because of the, be, 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 yeah, for sure. Or, or to, to Cumberland uh, County and yeah. Maine. We, we, we know a lot of those folks, yeah. <laughs> um, but I guess the question I would have is, there, is there some way we can do a, a public-private kind of enterprise? Yeah. You know, all of us moved here because we love this area. And I imagine that there are folks who are working on the North Shore who would love to be up here for a week who are paramedics. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it would be a light week for them. Sure. <laughs> but they could bring their experience and their ability and yeah. have a, a, a light week and, that, and still be able to provide a yeah. service. You know, that happens with emergency physicians and it happens with emergency nurses. Um, they're traveling, yeah. essentially traveling yeah. nurses and traveling ER physicians too. Um, and you know, if I were working in Boston and somebody gave me the opportunity to come and work at Memorial Hospital, let's say, you know, for a week, two weeks, um, I would love being here. Um, I would bring the experience that I've had working with a 100, 110 per day patient volume, yeah. you know, um, and then go back, yeah. you know. It would be light duty and you'd have a yeah. breather. A lot of the nursing but, staff at Southern Maine were what they call contracted yeah. nursing staff. Several were from Texas, yeah. and they come in for periods like four yeah. weeks and five weeks and get a lot of money and then go yeah. back. Yeah. And they're paying traveling nurses in this area yeah. $5,000 a week. Yeah. But that's where Memorial has a problem because where do you house those nurses who come yep. up for a month yep. or two from Texas yep. or North Carolina? Where do you house them here? Yep. Well, there's no place to put them. And that's right. where Memorial is struggling. Yeah. But that's kind of like I know. what Bill, Bill was referring to. We moved here because we love it here, but we took our chances with, you know, if a tree fell on us while we were. Yeah, you've got to, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. I, so, I, I understand. Like, like, I love what you just said it because I think the future, and I'm not talking about next month or no. next year, but the future is going to have to be something creative yeah. uh, that allows us to keep quality people here and working here without necessarily making sure that they live here. Right. And it's going to have to be productized because the yeah. city is not going to allow one of their city employees to disappear no. for a month to come up here. Yeah. So it's going to exactly. have to be an organization. And, and yeah. memorial space, I mean, I remember when Bob Tilly was a, a surgeon, and he was they a couldn't support two surgeons. Mm -hmm. So they only had one, because yeah. the hospital couldn't afford to have yeah. two surgeons. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I couldn't be more proud of our part of the Jackson Ambulance Squad. And I've been watching it since 1988. Yeah. Okay, well, and they do the job, and they've involved, they evolved, and they brought in the equipment that is needed. And you heard what Rick said; they are yeah. heading in the right direction, yeah. and they feel good about what they're doing. Yeah. So the idea of talking privatization without them being at the table and what it all means, I, I think it gets a little bit yeah. far ahead. But oh. as far as where the end, yeah, as far as the facility, yeah. and where it, maybe we should have an ambulance in town, yeah. I, I know I've had some people talk to us about that. Jerry, maybe you know a little bit more about Dick because you've been on the board well, in, in recent years. Yes. 
right? And I'm not sure where that debate is coming from because we're not that far away. But what, did you ever weigh in on that idea of, a, of ambulance in town? Well, as opposed I, to having them both out there. I the feel that the, the closer the better. Right. In yeah. other words, if we have uh, an ambulance mm -hmm. at the end of the uh, transfer station, mm -hmm. we had a right oh, facility yeah. there. Right. right. You know that could be Bartlett. From you know down mm -hmm. Route 16, so all of Glen Glen Ledge or the house. Where are the people like? I'm going to use our fire department as an example. We have firemen that live in Tamworth, <laughs> Conway, yeah. um, okay. you know, miles away. Right. Where, where are the right. right. we we'll be the same the staff. Only, it's the only negative. negative, except we'd have one ambulance in Bartlett and one ambulance yeah. here. But so, well, where it's the, the same people? people. Well, where are the people going to come from? Same people where they come from. It's the same. Past Bartlett to get to here. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah. It depends on where you work. Unless, it, it, unless they're going to come from work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the road crew. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The well, head of our road crew comes from I think the every, <laughs> every community that provides its own ambulance service, you can anticipate that the people who are working for it will get a frown in their face and get a little bit uptight if. Mm -hmm. Privatization is mentioned at all. That's what happened to me. Yeah, and um, you know the gentleman who was sitting here, Rick. Yeah, Rick. Right? Yeah. The, when I sixty-eight, I said action. Yeah. I said the word action, and he looked at me yeah. okay. as if I was the devil incarnate. Okay. And, and I'm not that's suggesting that's anything. Well, I, then you should be, be proud well. of what's going on here. Yeah. You know, yeah, but is it? But is it the best? that a town like I this can do. Getting better all the time. Yeah. They, they're trying right. to optimize I, I guess, their And I, there's nothing wrong with looking at what other possibilities are. I guess what I'm thinking is, 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 is there some way that we can change the paradigm somewhat yeah. to make it better for them? I mean, you, yeah. if you have somebody who's on their own doing the thing and you have a way of, for example, as you suggest, you bring that experience level in and you get training and you can yeah. bring people in and have it be a partnership right. uh, which strengthens the whole yeah. enchilada. I mean, it's, 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 I think it's really great that we are as independent as we are in, in yeah. New England and, and we have yes. how many different little towns we have that you know, it's, it's our place, but it, 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 and, and that's important, but when you're talking about deliverables that are greater than the ability of the community to deliver, you is, is need to look at other yeah. mechanisms to make sure it works. The, the frustration that I saw yesterday was in the young men who talked about the 10% success rate. Mm -hmm. And you could tell they're doing the best they can. Yeah. But he essentially said, we have to do better. We have to find ways you know, and, to do better. And that we want to have the equipment. Of course. And, and that, that, because that's all I'm so we, we need to think about things. ways that we can help facilitate that. Yeah, yep. yeah. That's yeah. It. And that's, that's, that's all I'm talking so about. When you, when, you know, when you talk about bringing an experienced person in to work for a week or two, the, the benefit in the reverse is that you take the less experienced person and move them down to trade, to a busier place. So they then get the chance well, there is to a less exchange program. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Well, uh, uh, and so you learn then. Well, yeah. well, just remember, we are wedded to Bartlett, Bartlett Jackson Ambulance. Yeah. So whatever is done. Yeah. Whatever we think of it, it, it has to. It be. has to start there. <laughs> it's well, it has to start. I mean, you know, that, in, in so far, that's what we've been doing. Yeah, for the and last it, forty that's, years or so. That's ninety-eight so, you know, percent of it. And and the question is, can we do some forward-looking that's mm -hmm. beneficial to them as well as the, yeah. the broader right. community yeah. by thinking beyond where what we've yeah. done. But they would have to be drawn into the oh, absolutely. conversation. I mean, absolutely. But, uh, but everything that I've said here today actually has come from the words of the ambulance people who were at the meeting. 
you know, that they recognize what's happening in the future. Yeah. Well, to, um, your, to yeah. your point, if you gave somebody the EMT chance to spend two weeks down in the North Shore yeah. doing their thing there, whoa. Right. Right. Yeah, it'd be great. I mean, I, I, here's an opportunity to do more CPR, to yeah. start more intravenous lines. You'll get too. 80 hours of yeah. real time. Right, and, and, and well, guess what? They love it. Yeah. Oh. They love it. I, I don't know. There's, there's, I think there's some exciting opportunities yeah, like if we could think about it and work on it. Yeah. There, there might even be people in Jackson who'd be willing to have them in their homes while right. they're here. Yeah. You know, yeah. Sure. Yes, <laughs> of course. Yeah. I mean, there, I would. there's ways to solve problems. Yeah. yeah. But I think that, yeah. that what Frank was saying is that any discussion of this should include well, our, our, yeah, our, our, our goal standard, BART. And, and and that, absolutely. <laughs> All I'm trying to do is make sure we, when we do our business around the ambulance that we're talking about, not just brick and mortar, right. are we going to put a facility in, you know, next to the police station, which that's kind of where people's heads get at when they're talking about capital improvement programs. Yeah. And it's like, well, is that what you're going to do or are you not going to do it? And it's yeah. like, well, no, it was, maybe that's not exactly the best thing. I want to bring up the idea that the live free or die state. Yeah. Yeah. And, and why would we want to do that? And, yeah. and who's going to sit there in that seat? And I, I, yeah. So we, we have a job to do that I think is broader than brick and mortar. But it requires that we as a town consider funding for capital improvement. And it will be not just funding dollars for brick and mortar. Well, and it will expand what the ambulance does, what, what service they provide. That's what I think that's what we're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. Is okay, here it is now, but down the road, yeah. are they going to be? really the first responders and stay right there. Yeah. You know, we don't have to move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They they sure. talked well, to, at the meeting about and how in we some get cases to that. Looking at the visiting nurses yeah. you know, and maybe replacing some of what the visiting nurses do too. I mean EMTs and paramedics are very well trained, you know, mm -hmm. for this kind of thing and and uh, God bless them for the work that they do. They're all they really are committed to their profession. Um, the, the visiting nurse program here is fabulous. Yes, <laughs> I was a part of it when I had my hip yeah. operated, and I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. My late wife. I this is good as I as good as I could have imagined. Yeah. Just I had I had my knees replaced, and they were fantastic. My wife had a colostomy. She's being treated very well yeah. by visiting nurses yeah. three yeah. times a week. Yeah. And they're training mm -hmm. her and I how to deal with it. Yep. Sure. And they're fabulous. Yep. All right. Yep. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. but one of the things that <laughs> this is telling me is that we have to really think about what we do with funding. Like, for example, if we're going to put six million in the firehouse, what does that leave us for these other necessary things? Yeah. We have to, do, dollars are scarce, so we have to be careful on allocating. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Exactly. If we want to have that stable, relatively low tax rate that we all enjoy exactly. right now. Yeah. yeah. Because a lot of the, the things that we're talking about means that it's, it's we, not going to be stable and it's going to go up. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we got to be ready for that too. Uh, uh, well, I'll say one thing right here. I think the capital improvement program. Mm -hmm will probably generate a higher tax rate for the town. Absolutely. Simply because we're talking about investing in Absolutely. the town. That's what, that's what we should and be and it's like, I have to say, my, my taxes have been flat for the last bunch of years. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think that's wrong. Yeah. I absolutely I think, yeah. think that that is well, look at irresponsible. Well, irresponsible know. in a situation <laughs> where you have to change what you're delivering and, and you can't just simply say well that's you know, the way we always did it and well, yeah it's the way we always did it. i mean it's like going to the grocery store and saying well i only have a hundred dollars in my budget last week and now it's going to cost 110 just eat less 
And well, that's what we're doing. We're eating less. And we're eating less each year as we go through by saying we have a higher cost, but same, same expenditure for taxes. And, and it means that we're investing less and less in our town each year. And eventually that just will strangle us to death. The way I don't think you could describe that, what you're describing, is that Bartlett, for example, is a rich town, much richer than us in terms of evaluation. Yes. Much, by three times or four times. Yes. But their tax rate's a lot lower than ours. Yes, it is, yes. Because they're, they're a rich town acting like a poor town. Yeah. Conway, on the other hand, is a poor town <laughs> acting like a rich town. <laughs> And so their tax rates through the roof. Right. And so, we're, in other words, I applaud our selectmen for being as careful as the dollar. I, I, as I, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that they're not doing the right job. What I'm suggesting is is that we do not have an action plan that works towards building to a future. Right now, we have we have been on stasis. We have been on. Let's not change what we're doing. Well, the, I couldn't disagree well, part of the, with that. Part of the reason we have a level tax rate is because even though their spending is going up, they've been taking from the unreserved capital fund to keep taxes level. Yes. And Absolutely. that's intelligent. But the tax rate right. is level. We pay more because the values of the houses go up. Right. So that's well, what you hear people complaining is our taxes are going up, but the tax rate has stayed flat. But the dollars out of our pockets has been fairly stable. Right? It's been fairly stable. Right. Yes, and I think that's, I don't see that as a negative. No, I don't. Because I think I see the improvements that this town has made. I, 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 again, going back to as long, many years as I've been here, and Dick, we've done a lot of things in this town. And we continue to. Yeah. And we continue to discuss those things. But to say that it's a bad thing that our taxes are low, because we're not taking care of business, I mean, I don't understand No, that I logic. didn't say that. What I said was, is that Right now, we are under-investing in our town. To prepare the town for the, for the ideas that we're putting forward in this capital improvements plan, we should be telling them, yes, your taxes are going to go yeah. up. But the choices are, which items do you want to embrace? Exactly. But I think we, we need to yeah. tell you know, mm -hmm. folks, hey, in order to do right. part of this, mm -hmm. it's going to cost more money. Yeah, for example, well, I think if, we put, if we put $7 million in the fire department, that takes away from other things. Absolutely. Like yes. yes, but not doing anything and just leaving a building that was out, built in 1948, I believe, and, and which... But is, except if you ask the firemen, what changes if you stay where you are with what you deliver? And they'll tell you nothing changes. Right. I, I'm not suggesting that we need to invest $7 million in the fire department. Okay? I don't know where that number but, came from. I don't know where that came from. That's way That's what it's for. I'm not 42. suggesting that. Yeah. But we do need to do something. Same thing yes. with the darn school. It's, yeah. it's like it, it's like we didn't, we decided to put that down because we weren't sure what the costs were going to be. But right. there are some changes. They've had the engineers, they've had, they've had, they did their due diligence. They had engineers decide what it was going to cost as a part from But again, they say 2.5. Mm -hmm. They're not anywhere close to proposing that yet. Yeah, yeah. But I guess what I'm suggesting it, we're not doing anything. Right now, we're not doing anything. We, you know, and, and when we do do things, uh, we do them by. Well, except well, that in the last year, we spent almost $2 million on our fire department. And can I just say also about the fire station, it, you know, because you're right, I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost more. We put so it on a hold, my best uh, way to right say now, that. We put it on a Right now, the selectmen have, have agreed that we want to get something on the warrant for a new fire station, all right? And we're going to make sure that people know what the impact will be for a um, moderate, you know, a residential home and also commercial business. So yeah. people can make up their mind and go and vote on yeah. whether it's going to be two thirds. That's that's all we can do. But that's movement mm -hmm. in one way or another. All right. We've all agreed that something has to be done. Something a new fire station. Something repair. But our first option is going to be, we hope, it's going to be on the warrant and let people decide, and then we'll go to the next thing. So we haven't been at a standstill. What are There's a lot of things we've done here. I'm going to say but we're not done yet. What are, what are people going to base their decision on 
if we, we haven't done it. We just started to. My God, I get that. I know we have to give more information, but we got at least we have a drawing, we have a, an amount, right? We don't have an amount. We yeah. have a, what yeah. Jay came up with. What are we no, he didn't, didn't come up with that. No, it wasn't just it. Jay, it was the, the architects, it was, it was the engineers, yeah, we, all we, of that. We also Seriously, have, but you know what that means? Uh, we also have the idea that also. This, this is going to be built right over here, right. and well, that, also, uh, that also assumes that that's the best use of that property. Well, I, I, I doubt that I, it is the best use of the property, or that's the best location for the fire department, except the fact that we, well, have, we have one person who's pushing for it, and we have a select board that, that seems to be in, taking that in and say, oh, that's the best is, idea I've heard yet. Well, the way I look at it is this, is that if it were to pass, all right, it's still a big if, okay, then we have building over there. It can be used for things like maybe you mentioned an ambulance. It takes care of maybe some of these if other we, but capital we may plans. Not need it's possible. We may not need an ambulance that's, located well, in this that's, town and that space. That's absolutely space. right. But we I are, mean, that's that's the whole thought of thinking about. That's what we do for planning. Is planning does the job of taking right. a look to see are you moving in the right direction or are you just right. doing stuff? Right. Okay. This we are not going to do the finances here. That's right. The town is going to, we're going to do the presentation. That's it. Yeah. And that's what we should concentrate on. Yeah, exactly. You got it. You got it. And they're going to know what I cringed myself at the thought of a fire station in the parking lot because we were involved with the library. And every time the library has a function, that parking lot's full. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And well, to put the Fire department there? Not only that, but if you saw the pictures of the building, think of the town garage. Yeah. It's the same size as the town garage. It's going to intrude into that hill on the And it's an industrial yeah. site product, which on a campus that is not that. And it changes the whole flavor of the town. I don't yeah, think you'll have a, a, a snowball's chance in hell of that passing. I'll um, put that yeah. right there. <laughs> that, Maybe. I'll, I'll, I'll put that right there. I'd like to make a motion. I have a motion. Yes. I'm hungry. Yes. <laughs> you didn't eat before. Okay. No. Like what, what's your motion? What motion? What motion? I'd, like I'd like to second yes. this motion. I haven't heard it yet. Yes. Yes. I don't know the motion is. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to go home. Yeah. All right. I, I'd like to return the meeting. Thank I, you. I, I think we can continue our discussion. Uh, it's been a lively one. I think it's been fun. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll continue that. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Again, yeah. we'll let you know. You'll probably, you'll probably see the video. We have a motion. It's in the We have a motion to second uh, yeah. to uh, do what? Where are we in the meantime? Adjourn. Adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.